All right, starting part two of our equine equipment and facilities lecture, we're going to move on to talking about barn design, flooring, and fencing. Barn design requires the following. You should position stables away from sources of dust so they don't blow in the door. You should avoid steep slopes to prevent slipping and injuries coming in and out of the barn. And you should be making flooring absorbent, easy to clean, and resistant to both pawing and slipping. Uh, and part of doing that is you need to be removing topsoil before you build stall floors. Barn design involves the following elements. Flooring, door design, stall design, stall size, ventilation, insulation, lighting, storage facilities, water, and fencing. Uh, flooring can be one of several types, such as concrete and asphalt, clay, a clay sand mixture, sand, limestone, dust, rubber floor mats, clay, wooden floors, and sand. Concrete asphalt. It has the advantage of it is easy to clean and requires virtually no maintenance. However, drainage is nearly non-existent. It can also be very cold and slippery and can cause increased leg problems in horses. Concrete is not ideal because of the slip hazard and the fact that it doesn't drain. You have to build in drains or squeegee everything out. It also has a tendency to cause condensation in high humidity weather, which makes it even more slippery. Clay is very widely used, uh, but it is high maintenance. It has a tendency to become warm and slippery when wet. It can develop holes and pockets. And it is very difficult and time-consuming to keep the floors level. I can speak for that from experience. Uh, I've redone the clay floors in stalls, and it's a multi-day process with a handheld pounding rod that's about a 10 by 10 piece of steel on a stick that you just slam down over and over again. Um, they can be very difficult to clean, and they can trap in odors, causing odor problems. And you need to make sure you place them over a subfloor of crushed rock or gravel so that things can drain. Clay sand mixture. This is a little bit more common. It's composed of two-thirds clay and one-third sand. Uh, it's cheaper. It's easy to obtain. And it can allow for good drainage and minimal odor problems. However, you must make sure it is well mixed and it is leveled and packed before you put bedding in a stall. Sand is very inexpensive and it requires no additional bedding to be put in the stall. However, it needs to be cleaned very regularly and often changed. It also raises a possibility of colic. Uh, we call it sand colic when a horse is rooting around in the sand and inhales a lot of it uh, or, or, or eats a lot of it and it starts clogging up their throat. Um, it is actually preferred as an underlayer for other flooring materials. Limestone dust uh, is placed over a good base and can allow for adequate drainage, uh, but it does require water and packed flooring before use. It makes a very, very hard surface, uh, and it needs to be four to five inches thick and placed over a thick base of sand. This is like your collegiate you use for roads. It makes a great road base, it makes a decent stall base, but personally I think it's a little messy and there's better options. Wooden floors. You almost never see these, at least not in this part of the country. If you're doing that, it needs to be a rough cut hardwood. It requires a minimum of two inch thickness. Uh, it requires treatment to prevent decay, to retard decay. Uh, wood floors are very slippery when they're wet. They also tend to attract rodents and they should be placed over a base of sand or gravel to aid in drainage. Could also be packed with gravel or clay. Not very economical. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, maybe somewhere up north they might do it, but definitely not worth it around here. There's plenty of clay and I'd rather do that. Rubber floor mats. These are wonderful, They're but they are expensive. They're very easy to clean. Uh, they should be at least 5 eighths of an inch thick. Must be able to withstand pawing. Like I said, the, the wonderful thing about them is they're easy to clean. Uh, I had some notorious pars in my barn I worked at, and they would just dig holes in a clay base, and we would 
for those, we'd shell out, we'd go get those solid rubber floor mats from Atwood's Tractor Supply and line the stall with them, and it worked real well. It was very easy to clean, but it's expensive to rubberize a stall floor. <clears throat> Let's talk about doors. Door design should include the following considerations. Smaller doorways increase the risk of energy. Injury. Uh, sliding doors are very useful. Half open hinged doors tend to block or decrease the width of a passage. So think about a regular door. It's, that's what it means by hinged door. If it's not all the way open, it blocks. That's why those sliding doors are more useful. Uh, doors should be at least four feet wide if you're going to bring a horse through it. Because there has to be room for you and the horse to go in side by side. The door latch should be operable from both inside and outside the stall, so you can't get locked in. And it should be simple to use, because you're likely going to only have one hand to do it. But not so simple that a smart horse or a bored horse can figure out how to use it. Um, the Prefort stalls that I'm the most familiar with, they had a, had a locking bar that you had to pull down with one hand, and then push the slide, push the gate, while you slid it open. And it worked real well. Um, you, some other things you could should consider in stall design is it should be built be built out of durable, solid materials which will withstand rubbing and kicking of horses. Wood is the most commonly used for your stall walls themselves. Uh, they should be at least two inch thick. That gives it the best strength against kicks. And it's recommended at least for the bottom half of the stall do a treated wood because that's where uh, they're going to urinate, that's where their water is going to get spilled, and it is the most likely to begin rotting. Wood is cheap, but it is also a fire hazard. You have to keep that in mind. You need to think a uh, wall should be uh, smooth with no protrusions. You could also make it out of, out of concrete or brick. Uh, block and brick is warmer, which is great in the wintertime, not so much in the summer, and it's not a fire hazard, which is a big thing. Uh, steel and aluminum can also be used, but they get expensive very quickly. Stall size. It depends on your breed of horse and the horse's activity. Uh, your ceiling should be no less than 8 feet. That's an awful short ceiling. Um, I like... Uh, 10 to 12 foot ceiling, just so that if they do rear back, there's not a chance that they're going to hit a light or anything of that nature. <coughs> uh, ventilation. Ventilation. I mentioned this on the last lecture. It is very important. Uh, it reduces problems with odor, bacteria, and wetness. Uh, it helps to circulate air to keep animals cool in the hot summer months. Uh, but it must be properly placed and, and have adequately sized vents in the roof to be successful. You can't just put a little, uh, like, bathroom fart fan, a uh, bathroom fart fan in there. That doesn't work. Uh, so let's see. What's next? Insulation. Insulation only keeps stables a few, de few degrees warmer than outside temperatures, but it decreases the rinse risk of condensation building up and getting on everything and causing a lot of slip hazards and corrosion issues. Stall warmth, you should provide the following. It's not as big a deal in our part of the world. Uh, our biggest concern is going to be the first one, prevent freezing of water pipes during uh, random hard freezes we get, but we'll mostly do that simply by uh, insulating the pipes themselves. If you move further north, then you need to heat your stables. Uh, it helps reduce stress for newborn foals or young stock and provides comfort during hazardous weather conditions. When we get freak storms here, we just uh, insulate the water, slap some uh, blankets on the horse and go on about our business. Because it's not worth it for most people to ins insulate and heat their barn uh, most of the time in East Texas. In Texas period, really. Maybe up uh, north around Abilene, Amarillo, but not here. Lighting. Lighting is the main factor in the shedding of hair. 
Lighting can stimulate the glands and production of hormones that cause the ester cycle in mares. And when the when they're cycling, they're shedding hair. Uh, your barn should be provided with indoor lights, and approximately 10% of lighting should be from skylights, if available. Also, sunlight has ultraviolet light, which is a natural killer of airborne bacteria and viruses, which is a uh, nice side benefit. <coughs> Storage facilities are used to store equipment, hay, and feed. They require fans or air filters because dust and water in feed areas can lead to forage mites, which can cause feed damage, skin problems, upset stomach. Uh, water can also cause mold and mildew, which is not good for your health or the health of the animals. And you should make sure it's vermin proof and clean. Uh, make sure rats, raccoons, uh, anything like that cannot get into your storage facilities. Water. Water must be kept adequate and easily accessible. You must keep it from freezing in cold weather. And buckets should be emptied, cleaned, and refilled daily with fresh water. Buckets are not the most efficient because you have to clean them so often. Uh, water can be provided in uh, several ways, like a frost-free hydrant, a hose, or a bucket that are the least costly method. Um, automatic waterers, uh, they're very nice. They save labors, but they're also expensive. And you do need to check them daily to make sure they're still working, make sure nothing's caused them to malfunction. And you need to clean them with disinfectant regularly. Fencing is perhaps the next most important part. It keeps out your unwanted animals, and, and in order to do so, they must be properly constructed and maintained. Uh, some considerations with fencing are safety, efficiency, cost, aesthetics, and the height of the fence. Uh, some materials you can build a fence out of include these things, like wood fencing, synthetic post and rail fencing, wire fencing, electric fencing, barbed wire fencing, PVC posts and rails. Wood fencing is very traditional and very sturdy, but it is not. It is also very expensive. However, it's practical. It does a good job. The problem is, besides cost, it requires maintenance. You've got to go through and make sure you're keeping them painted or whitewashed or stained or treated in some way to keep them from rotting out. Um, also requires your post to be at least four inches in diameter. Um, that's awful small for a fence post for a horse. Uh, you could do a four inch top, but you'd want to reinforce that periodically with probably a six or an eight inch top. I wouldn't do entirely four inch tops on a wood rail fence. Synthetic post and rail fencing. They're expensive to uh, install and maintain, but they don't require paint. Um, you don't see a lot of these. Um, they, they were kind of trendy for a while, but like I said, they're expensive. Wire fencing. This is uh, very common. Uh, and when I'm saying wire fencing here, what I mean is a woven wire fencing. Uh, something like a 2 inch by 4 inch rectangular weave. Uh, that's that's what we call no climb. It's it's preferred, and it's also strong and somewhat flexible. The big advantage to close woven wire is it prevents feet from getting caught. If you use like a four by four hog wire, they'll get their feet caught and mess mess themselves up and mess your fence up. Electric fencing is attached as a single wire on top of a wooden or wire fence. It's not very visible. But it will help prevent horses from damaging fences. Um, you see a lot of places that use the top wire as an electric. I've used it myself. It's pretty good. Uh, once you get them trained to it. Barbed wire fencing. Perhaps the most common in East Texas. And is a great fence for cattle. It is not good for horses. It is very likely to cause young horses to injure themselves multiple times. And it's not just young horses. Old horses will do it too. It's very easy for them to hurt themselves with. And the last one I want to talk about is PVC posts and rails. They are low maintenance, they are cost effective, and they are strong and flexible. You see these uh, quite a bit. 
and they're kind of growing in popularity. All right, we're going to stop there. Make sure you complete the notes. Um, remember, spelling matters, and they are due by 4 o'clock on Friday.